don't know how to get it. I'm talking about power. What is power? How do we get power? Who controls the power? What can power do for me or maybe do against them? I'm going to take you on a journey, something personal in reference to power. Some may be considered ultimate power. And we're not talking just like the president of the United States or those in Congress, politicians that possess political power, uh, the sway and weight of the people. But not just that. Think about business owners, major CEOs of companies and so forth. That's power too, isn't it? What about having a lot of money? <laughs> One can consider that power as well because the influence that you have. Power. Basically, the control or influence of other people. But not just that, to get you to do things that maybe you don't want to do or wouldn't do. But for those of you that are new to this channel, welcome. And I highly encourage you, if you would, go ahead and subscribe so that way you'll be notified of any future programs that I put out. And also press that like button. That helps the YouTube algorithm to let others know that you like my content and they'll submit it out to others to view. That's how matters grow in social media. So if you share, like, comment, or subscribe, it all helps in the promotion of one's channel. So stick with me because I'm going to talk about power and how it came my way. And I wasn't even looking for it. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, AKA Basketball Tall. Thank you for joining me today. You are about to experience something that most people never get to experience. But a lot of folks are curious about something or maybe not even give it any thought about what is real, true power. Even on our highest levels to the president on down to major companies. What is power? What I'm gonna share with you is not to show arrogance. It's not to boast, because that's not my intent here, but to look at something in a scientific way as to what power is and how you view it. I'm gonna take you on a journey as to what power was for me. And as I look back, I can clearly see what power truly is. And a lot of times, we don't even realize we have it. So, don't tune away. This will be an eye-opener. It'll be something that maybe you've never thought of, and then again, you may have thought of it. But open your eyes even more to its strength, the power. What is power? How do I get power? What can I do with power? How would power change me or change their behaviors? Stay tuned. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have power. I mean, really, true, real, what we consider to be power. Come with me. I'm going to take you on a trip, something that actually happened, a real story. But this story is going to be packed with such thought, but not just that, but to look deep inside what it's like to really have a piece of an experience, a power. Played high school basketball, got notoriety, go from there and go to college, made achievements there as well in athletics, high school and in college. Then go off and become a police officer. Isn't that power? It's not those that may be at the highest level in politics, are those that run and own companies. That's a different sense of power. But it is power. What's the commonality? Control. Having control of a situation because you're the one with the power and that authority. And you can terminate. That's power, isn't it? But what about power on a different scale? Such as being a cop the power of the law, or whether it's city, federal, state law, that's power. That's an ultimate power, wouldn't you think so? How would it feel if you possessed that power? 
How would you behave if you had such a force behind you with blazing guns? That's power. And that power I experienced as a police officer because I had a badge and I had a gun and I had the authority to enforce the law. But it's how you use that power. What kind of person you might be if you had such authority? Would you be a good guy? Would you be a person who tried to always do the right thing, including help people? Because there's a lot of distress out there. There's a lot of dysfunction out there. And there's a lot of people that just want to be protected and people that experience peace and joy and happiness and love. That's the kind of power you have in your hands. But you also have that power that could take someone's life. Think about that. That's real. Because in reality, there are true cop haters out there. And you haven't done nothing to them. You can come up to them smiling. Hey, how you doing? And next thing you know, someone try to stick a knife in you or shoot you because they're cop haters. Now, of course, they're not the majority because the majority of society are good people, really. But we all battle with sin. We all do. That's another commandant factor that keeps us all down because we let sin rule too much in our lives. Now, let's feel more power. I'm now a district court juvenile officer. I work for the district court, actually the 20th Judicial District in the state of Oklahoma. Now I've got an office and I have an assistant juvenile officer. You answer to three judges. They were my boss. I would assist the police department. I would assist, you know, in juvenile matters like committed a crime or out of control. Or I assist, you know, the, the county sheriff, you know. But they couldn't tell me what to do. Think about that. Isn't that power? If the sheriff call you out to assist, if the chief of police or any of the officers or deputies call you out to assist in these other towns, that's power. But think about this. I was the only dark guy in the whole area. <laughs> think about that when you really think about it. I was the only dark guy in that whole area. I'd be in towns where there were no people that looked like me. But I had the law. I had the support of the police and the deputies or any state officers, agencies, you know? That's power. The only people that had control over me, my state district judges, those was the only one had authority over me. So think about that. That's power, isn't it? Imagine if you had that power. Now look at this. You start as a police officer. Everybody, you know, getting to know you, you know, everybody knows you in the area and it just grows. And then now you become a district court juvenile officer, which stretched to five counties because that's what the district court, you know, jurisdiction was, five counties. And I'm going to name those counties. Carter, Love, Johnston, Murray, Marshall counties. And being a juvenile officer working for the court, the court was who I obeyed. I would assist and always try to do the right thing in helping all the agencies that called up on me, especially in Carter County. It was an experience, but the experience that I had, being the only dark guy in that whole region, nobody gave me no hell, truly. And I know a lot of, you know, officers are listening to this right now, and, you know, maybe a judge or two. That's the way it was, but think about it, getting back to power. Think about that power. Isn't that true, real, what power is? Think about that. And I would go into a situation in a town that was nobody that looked like me because the officers called on me. And then I would come in and lay my jacket down so that way they could see the gun under my arm and the badge on my hip. And then, you know, they already know who I am because the officers already told them I was coming. They, it's like a built, big, like a thing built up, you know. But then again, I had the reputation of police also behind me. But think about power. And when the officers called me over there to assist, 
So, you know, when the, you know, cops in town or the black guy, whoever, you know, looking like a detective, you know, uh, everybody going to know you're there. <laughs> everybody gonna, in the community going to talk about you, you know, like, hey, you heard about this tall black guy, you know, that, you know, he's a new guy from, get from the court, you know, police or whatever, you know. But think about that, that kind of power. Then when I was with Child Welfare Department of Human Services for six months, I then transitioned over to the Juvenile Services Unit, made a lateral transition. JSU broke away from DHS, Child Welfare and Department of Human Services Division, and became its own entity, the Office of Juvenile Affairs. We were a state agency handling juvenile probation and parole. And, you know, we dealt with kids that was out of control and needed supervision, too. But think about that kind of power. Come with me as I share this power with you. You know, the police make an arrest or make a referral to your office or the district attorney's office. But even if the police officer takes it to the DA, the DA review it, and then, of course, if it's something determined to be sent our way, then they'll send our way. And then, of course, we pull the family, the kid in, you know, for whatever crime may be committed or kids just need supervision. When you deal with kids, when you place kids, those kids can be 300 miles away, like from Ardmore to Miami. 300 miles one way. You travel the state. I enjoyed that. But the thing about it is, if a kid does not obey the court's order and gets in trouble again or fail to do what's in the, or fail to do what's in the treatment plan, then we got power. We can submit to the DA's office an affidavit. Then it goes to the court because we are requesting OJA a detention order to lock that kid up and check this power out. So if the court finds that it's necessary, signs the order. And then I give the order to the police or to the sheriff or whoever, you know, to go pick them up, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know. I must admit, I've gone with them at times, you know because of my police and district court juvenile officer, you know, and law enforcement experience. But think about that power where you can just go to somebody's home, the police, you know, mom, dad, the kids there, whoever's there. Go in there and have the police officer meet me there because I knew it probably going to be a bad situation, you know, so you needed some backup or control. So you go there, you got the deputy, you know, two deputies with you, you know, and uh, you give mom the court order, signed court order, you know, and uh, she said the kid's there, then the officer's going in to go get it. That's power. Think about that. Think about that. When you just get an order and tell an officer or a deputy, whoever, you know, it may be a state officer or something, you know, uh, you know, like highway patrol, whatever, you know. And they go by and they get that kid, take him away from their parents. Parents screaming, hollering, some of them cussing, who knows what. You have to take that kid, remove him away. And you remove him away because for the protection of the public. Because guess what, folks? Kids kill too, which we all know that. Now, I've said all of that to you to say this. You now know what power it really is. This is not a brag. Look at it as a scientific matter. Think about that. What power really, really is. And I just took you into a world of true power. That was my experience. And it was real. That's how some things get done a little bit. You just got to taste you just got a little sample of what that power really, really is. That's real power. That kind of power can even take down CEOs or companies. The director, executive director of hospitals, banks, wherever. That's the kind of power you possess. Think about that. Now you know what power feels like. You can almost see it. So if you had that power, be honest, how you are right now, how would you feel? How would you think you might feel? You don't know until you're in it. But just out of curiosity, make-believe, fantasy, whatever, how do you think you might be? 
But the bottom line is this, if you be nice to people and you do the right thing, even as an officer, makes life a whole lot better for you. But when you know you got to do the job, you got to do the job. Because there is evil out there. It really, really is. There are bad people. There are killers that's roaming around, not to scare anybody. But there are genuine killers roaming around us all the time. We up and down the highways. We're passing them and don't even know it. Because there are killers out there. So lock your cars, lock your homes, be safe. Because now you know what true power really is. And this is not bragging, this is sharing. Tell somebody, share it with others, let them feel and get to know what power really is. <laughs>